There have been interesting initiatives going on, and to offer us maybe a thought about uh, one of those uh, programmes uh, that has come uh, out from the World uh, Economic Forum, um, uh, there's an amazing programme which is trying to highlight really interesting, so top 10 urban innovations uh, developed uh, um, as part of the Global Agenda Council on the Future of Cities, really trying to see change is taking place, it can happen, we can transform. And maybe to offer a few words about that and to give us a sense of how a big body like the World Economic Forum is getting its shoulder behind the wheel of transformation. Um, I'm delighted to welcome to the platform someone who was very much involved in this report and that work. Uh, and that work. Please uh, welcome uh, Gretchen Efgen. Welcome. Top 10 Urban Innovations, as described. What's the problem? Oh, we have some issues, sorry. There's always got to be one, so we'll get it out of the way now, right? How's that? OK, great. So we'll try that again. So it's my great pleasure to introduce you to the Top 10 Urban Innovations, as described by the Future of Cities Council. We're a World Economic Forum Global Agenda Council that is made up of an internationally diverse group of leaders from technology, academia, industry, cities, and global development organizations. This past fall, we scanned the globe for examples of innovations in cities that address city challenges in this time of unprecedented urban migration. We looked for examples that were scalable, replicable, and adaptable technologies, programs, and models from a variety of urban environments. Some of these innovations are only possible due to advances in technology, but others are as old as cities themselves, reminding us that our environment can always inspire new thinking. Upon publishing this list, we looked for a city that was willing to examine its progress across these top 10 innovation areas. And we certainly thank Mayor Walsh, Chris Osgood, and team, um, for sharing their plans with us, and that uh, publication will be on the World Economic Forum blog later today. The top 10 innovations touched across four main themes. The first, unleashing spare capacity, seems appropriate to start with here at MIT, which was the first partner for Zipcar, the world's largest car sharing service. I spent several years there leading strategic business development, and Zipcar's business model arguably planted the first seeds for the broader social consciousness around efficient use of assets. With personally owned vehicles sitting idle 95 to 99% of the day, there is significant spare capacity to be reimagined. With this framework in mind, innovators unlocked other categories of underutilized assets, spaces that we can reprogram for a variety of uses from parking structures that, double, that serve double duty as function spaces for weddings in Miami, to that spare room that's now a source of extra income on Airbnb. With one third of World Cup visitors in Brazil staying in an Airbnb, we have an entirely new paradigm for how we think about flex capacity in our cities. Certainly the uh, transportation panel may touch on this uh, topic today. Also within the context of spare capacity in cities are new innovations in urban farming. Think vertically. By pairing traditional hydroponic methods with new advances in LED lighting that mimic the sunlight, our vertical cities can grow leafy greens with systems that can activate previously unused nooks, crannies, and rooftops around our cities, and with yields as high as 100 times more per square meter than traditional agriculture, we can really start to address the issue of food resiliency and security in our cities. The second theme was around cutting out the peaks. Sensor technologies are driving strong improvements in water, energy, and lighting infrastructure in our cities, reducing wastage and allowing for dynamic responsiveness, rather than accommodating the average, which leaves, results in about 20% idle capacity. So for example, in Queensland, they were able to cut direct water losses by 1 billion liters in a year by leveraging sensors to detect and reduce response time to resolve network events. 
Code generation mechanical systems capture and use heat from large computing systems that can then cool the office complex, complexes that house them. We can improve energy efficiency and reduce CO2 emissions. Scandinavia, South Korea, and Japan are leaders in pursuing these systems. Advances in lighting technologies not only increase energy efficiency, but also provide on-demand lighting through sensor-driven street poles. As embedded infrastructure in the urban environment, street poles can also play host to sensors capable of gathering a variety of data points on the city. Pollution, noise, real-time parking availability. As we, collect, as we create the ability to collect these data points on our environment, careful attention must be paid to privacy concerns. Today's utility and responsive environment panels will touch on many of these themes. People-centered innovation was our third broad theme. As city planners and urbanists continue to rethink how we plan our cities and evolve away from the automobile-centric policies of the previous millennium, we're now putting people at the heart of our cities. And this is key because arguably the best way to improve a city is by mobilizing its citizens, shaping behavior and improving the lives of the city's inhabitants. Cycling is one great example here. And with bike share programs and an increased network of protected bike lanes, cycling has officially graduated from fringe to a mainstream commuting option in many cities where a culture of cycling was previously unknown. Cycling results in higher rates of public transportation adoption, reduced congestion, better health, and quicker commutes. Cycling is 40% faster than a car during peak hours, but it's even faster than that with the Copenhagen wheel. Um, it's more predictable and it's less expensive. This is a relatively low cost and low tech solution to innovation in our cities. And ensuring that progress is in our cities is accessible and attainable by all populations Social integration programs are critical, and Medellin, Colombia presented a unique example of connecting marginalized populations with economic opportunity. By installing an elevated cable car, they provided access to opportunity and drastically reduced commute times, completely reimagining the, the connective tissue of the city. And last, but certainly not least, small-scale infrastructure thinking can punch above its weight. Cities will always need large-scale infrastructure projects, but small-scale improvements can have an outsized impact through incremental improvements on the urban environment. Data improvements in transportation provide smaller but highly targeted improvements to infrastructure use, where to put taxi bays, optimizing bike lane placement, as well as providing on-demand access to both public and private transportation options. And finally, connecting these innovations symbolically with Earth Day today, Adopt-A-Tree programs provide a low-tech, feel-good way to involve citizens in the care of their cities. Programs encouraging residents to care for, care for a tree fosters a sense of community while addressing the real needs of a city in maintaining and expanding its urban canopy in pursuit of CO2 emission reduction goals and ensuring the integrity of the terra firma. We'll be capping off today's program by launching the World Economic Forum's Green Canopy Initiative with a tree planting, a symbolic reminder on Earth Day that our natural environment can often give us the strongest inspiration for innovation. Thank you. <laughs>